Hello, this is Mischief Cheese. And I'm Zombie Cat. And this is our review of the Mezco 112 Collective Michael Myers action figure from Halloween. And there's the box, which is pretty plain. It's pretty much all black. It says Halloween on it. And Michael Myers. But then the side has the picture on it. I'm not sure what all these scuffy marks are. If they're supposed to be there, I think they are. But it's all over it. Or else the box is just really banged up. I don't, I don't know. But I don't really care. But there's the back. You can see everything it comes with. The top just says 112 Collective. The bottom just says stuff. And it's a slip cover. Jeez. And there he is, all wrapped up. Oh, all wrapped up in plastic. Okay, let's open him up. So when you take it out, there's two layers. This is front layer you see, and then underneath there's another layer with the stand and a ghost turd. A ghost turd. And batteries. Okay, so he's all opened up and he is really cool. And he comes with a lot of cool stuff. Now I do have to mention that I was not planning on getting this figure, despite really liking Michael Myers, because I like Michael and Freddy and Jason. I love those three. But I wasn't planning on getting this because it's a little smaller than like NECA's figures and that just kind of bugged me. But Shane Pittman, who I was mentioned in my other videos, just kept saying, you gotta get him, you gotta get him, you gotta get him, you gotta get him. And then, because he got him himself and loved him and he sent me pictures. And so he finally talked me into it. He said I would not be disappointed. And he said if I was disappointed, I could probably just end up selling it because I'd probably go for a lot. But I'm not disappointed. It is really cool. It is a smaller scale than the other figures, but I mean, he doesn't have to stand next to them. He can stand by himself. I mean, Michael doesn't hang around with other horror characters, so it's not like he has to be next to them. And part of the reason we considered not getting him was because it's kind of expensive, too. That's the other thing, yes. But now that we have him, I can see where the price is somewhat justified. I still think it's a little bit too much, but I can see why he costs more than most figures. Well, I've heard these called mini hot toys a few times, and I can kind of see that. Usually when a figure is this small and they put cloth on it, it just doesn't look right. Yeah, it usually looks like shit. <laughs> Somehow they made it look good on a tiny figure like this. It looks so damn good. A lot of the issues usually that they pick a fabric where the weave is too big and it doesn't look right for the scale. But that fabric looks really good on him. Yeah, he looks like pretty much perfect. I wish I had a, a six scale that looked like this. I wish we had ones of these for all the rest of the slashers. Yeah, well they made one with Jason. And he's... I want Freddy. So yeah, thanks Shane Pittman for forcing me to get this. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't want to sell it. I want to keep it because it is awesome. It is really cool. But uh, you can see he comes with multiple accessories. He comes with his knife, which I already put in his hand. He comes with that cool base down there. And then the little hook thing, which I don't know why you would need that for Michael. So he can do jumps and flips. Yeah. <laughs> like Michael always does. He comes with three extra hands for each arm. You can see down there. We'll go over them by themselves. He comes with a second kitchen knife. It looks like the same knife, it's just this one's got blood on it. He comes with the Judith Myers tombstone. And he comes with a jack lantern with real light up action. And he comes with the with an alternate head, which is the ghost head, where he's wearing the glasses. He also comes with a little baggie to put him in. Which is kind of cool because a lot of collectors put their figures in bags or put the extra accessories in bags. That's what I do. I usually don't put my figures in bags, but I put their extra accessories in bags. If, they're, if they don't just go in my little compartment boxes. I found that even though that sorts them pretty good, sometimes it still makes it hard to tell who goes to, like what little hands go to who when they all look the same. Mm-hmm. So it's, sometimes it is better to just keep them in a little baggy with all the same accessories. And there's also some directions that tell you what to do and what not to do because similar to like a six scale figure, this is somewhat delicate in some ways and you gotta be careful. It even says in there that these toys are intended for 18 plus. Yeah, this, is, this should not be for a little kid. 
And that's, I mean, some little kids could handle it and wouldn't screw it up, but... A lot I of think, them. like, some 12-year-olds can handle it. I definitely wouldn't give it to anyone younger than that. <laughs> Looking at the head, I think they did an excellent job on the mask. This is supposed to be, like, from a Halloween Part 1. I think that really looks like that mask. That's my favorite one, too. The original mask. It seems like mm -hmm. every one after that was a little goofy to me. That's kind of like 3-0 did a, they did a part six, six scale Michael one. I don't want it because I just really don't like that mask the way it looks. But uh, I do definitely like the first one. The only thing that kind of bugs me, it's not a big deal at all, but as you can see his eyes so much. I mean, if you get the light right, it's just like the movie, like right there, you can't see the eyes. But if you shine a light right on him, you can. I mean, it makes sense that you do because usually the movie's in the dark and you wouldn't see his eyes. It just... I'm not used to seeing his eyes, that's why. You just have to make sure when you pose them somewhere that you put them in the right light. Yeah, I know. It shouldn't be hard because our house is not very well lit. No. <laughs> just got bright lights on them because we're doing a review. <laughs> yeah, they did a really nice job on the hair too. It's got it pulled, like, I don't know, coned back or whatever. Kind of like how he wore it in the first movie. I'm talking like it's his actual hair. It's the mask hair, but you know what I mean. Yeah, it looks so good. Like wearing a wig, sort of. Yeah. You can still style it. You can still see his uh, skin underneath the mask down there. And the black shirt underneath. And then these coveralls are, what, are really good. Because that's one thing about Michael is his outfit's not that much to look at. <laughs> it's just a blue, like, what is it, a, a um, auto mechanic coveralls. There's not much to it. So... They really have to do a good job on it to make it interesting and to make it look good. And yeah, that looks good. Yeah, they did. That looks nice. I like that back there too because that's what they do. They all wrinkle up in the back, around the side a little bit when you're uh, tightening them up. I mean, this is. I I haven't seen that many, but this is definitely the best cloth outfit I've seen on a figure this small. Yeah, me too. But uh, supposedly a lot of those 112 collector figures are good like that. I just, this is our first one. We actually got two at the same time. We also got the Harley Quinn from Suicide Squad, but we have not opened it yet. But, damn it, this probably make me want to get more, because it's so yeah. good. Ah, <laughs> uh, Shane. I what have you, you done? <laughs> I blame you. Food got us into those stupid hot toys. I know. And now you got us into these. We don't have any money. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that boots. I mean, that nice job in that too. Another thing I liked about this figure is he feels real solid. I mean, some figures they just feel kind of cheap, and he just he feels like something. I haven't gotten to molest him yet. We well, should hold him because he just feels like he's. I don't know. Yeah, like, he does feel really solid. Like when you drive a car and sometimes they just feel cheap and rickety and sometimes you drive a car and they feel like this feels like a solid car. Yeah, usually the plastic doesn't feel that hard. Um, one thing is a little difficult to figure out which way, because his, his arms are straight when you first get them. It's kind of hard to figure out which way you got to bend them. So just carefully try to move it around. Like They seem to be in the right position already, luckily. But I don't know if everybody's would be. I don't know if, you, if I'm explaining that properly. What I'm trying to say, like if you how the hinge joint is situated inside yeah. his sleeve. You gotta make sure it's in a, facing the right way. Or you don't want to break it. I don't know how easy it would break, but you gotta be careful with these expensive toys. It does seem like the body's pretty sturdy. Yeah. But you have to be more careful. It even says in the the paper in there, you have to be careful about the clothes. One thing nice is similar to a lot of six scale figures is. They're usually pretty good at standing up on their own, and he is too. Mm -hmm. He stands up nice. It seems like his weight and everything just helps him stand up good. He's balanced. But like I said, one of the main reasons I was hesitant to get these is because of the scale. It's like, why do I want a small figure when I got all seven inches for horror figures? And I'll show you a comparison to some of the other ones. Now this one, this is NECA's older Michael Myers figure, and it's a little oversized. Yeah, he's a little bit gigantic. Yeah, he's bigger than NECA's current figures. A little bit. So that's maybe just a little bit too big. But the mask on this one looks so much more accurate than that one. No, yeah, I think... Yeah, this mask looks a bit weird. Yeah. 
But I think if NECA put a classic Michael Myers out now, it would probably be right, because they've yeah. improved so much. But apparently they don't have the rights to do it. They're just going to make the new movie out, Michael. And here's the McFarlane Michael Myers. I don't With know where. an invisible kniffy. Yeah, I don't know where his knife went. And he's a, he's not much bigger. On both of them, they tried so hard on the coveralls and just kind of made them look plasticky. Well, they're made of plastic. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know what I mean? Like, the, yeah, the finish no. on them and everything, they look like he's wearing raincoat coveralls. <laughs> yeah. But once again, this Mezco mask is so much better. Mm-hmm. So here's a more recent NECA figure. This is Jason. You can see about the height difference. So this definitely is not in scale. Like this is a Maybe seven inch. Maybe he's just a tiny man. No. <laughs> he's like five foot tall, <laughs> and Jason's like six ten. <laughs> Michael's not giant, but he's not short either. I know. Jason was short, and then later he becomes tall. He's magical. He's a magical zombie man. Yeah. You do what he wants. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can see this is a seven inch figure. And the Mezco is a, a six inch figure, so they're not meant to be next to each other. How tall is Michael supposed to be? Isn't he around like six foot? Uh, I don't know. I mean, he was he seemed to be about average height in the old movies, and then and then Rob Zombie's remake, which I don't think really counts, is he's a giant. <laughs> and just because he's standing nearby and it's also a recent figure, here's one of the uh, best Michael Myers figures. <laughs> Now these are this the, is quite a comparison. Yeah. <laughs> now this is the Savage World figure by Funko, and they're meant to be goofy like this, so it's not really <laughs> much of a comparison. It's not really fair. Yeah, but they are two recent Michael Myers figures, so... <laughs> <laughs> I guess we start looking at some of these accessories now. Here's his base, <clears throat> which I love that. That's like my favorite, like, uh, I don't know what you call it, like, cover art is that I just like the way they did that the knife and then the pumpkin is kind of like, like knives yeah going back it just looks cool and the hand kind of blends in in a way I always loved that so I'm glad they put that on there and it's kind of textured too there you could put his foot on the peg if you want and I think if people are going to use this stand that's probably most likely what they're going to do but if you want to use this this thing you got why would you need that I don't know <laughs> you got to pop this out of there with something you could probably use could probably use this to pop it out but uh <clears throat> let me just stick that in there and then you got the little claw arm maybe that's to pose his victim maybe huh that he's stabbing <laughs> yeah I, I really don't know why you'd want this for Michael I think it's just more of a... It's just a standard. Collectors like to have it. Yeah. Well, I think they may, they mostly do superheroes, this Mesco 112 Collective. Mostly like Marvel characters, DC characters. Can I that, try something? That would probably want this. So that it's they're probably just a standard thing they're going to put with all of them. So Zombie Cat made use of the... <laughs> of the stand. He's Superman! <laughs> Wouldn't that be terrifying? <laughs> Flying at you with his yeah. knife. <laughs> I mean, any respect that anybody has for the movies would be gone if he starts flying around. But it would be that awesome. That would be terrifying. Yeah, it would be pretty scary. <laughs> I guess we could look at a couple different hands. And the, so far, I've only switched one hand, but they they stay on snug, but also come off easily. Because if anybody who's changed hands on figures, you know, sometimes it's scary. It's like, why won't you come off? And sometimes they break when you do that. Yeah, a little and, nubbin comes off in the hand, and then you're out a hand, and you can't <laughs> get it back on there. In the other extreme is sometimes the hands just don't stay on. They just fall off. Mm. But I think, yeah, so far, they stay on real good and come off easily. So that's good. But not too easily. They don't just fall off on their own. He's got a little string there on his sleeve. Oh yeah, why not? Oh, I'm going to trim that off. But, yeah, the hand goes in there pretty good. I like that hand. And there's the more relaxed hand. And I switched this hand out. And I think that's what this hand is for. It's holding the knife this way instead of 
the stabbing down position. I usually picture him holding it the other way though. Yeah, me too. But he does sometimes hold it this way. And there he is holding the bloody knife, which ain't really much different than the non-bloody knife. It's just... I mean, it is different because it has a very different... You know what I mean? Never mind. <laughs> Shut up. I really like that he comes with both of them. Yeah, me too. Both options. He should. One thing Shane Pittman pointed out to me, he's saying he thinks the, uh, the knife is a little small. And from looking at pictures, I think he might be right. It does seem like maybe this knife is small. I mean, there's some NECA knives that you could probably use. There's one that came with Chucky, the Ultimate Chucky, and the one that came with Part 2, Jason. It might work a little better. Another nice touch, if you look closely, is that they made his hands dirty. There's even, like, dirt around his fingernails. Just a nice little touch, and it makes it look even more realistic when you look closely at it. Okay, I just popped the head off, and it came off nice and easily. And then you gotta stick this on. And in the directions, it says, do not hold on to the glasses while you're shoving the head on because you could permanently permanently remove the glasses which would be bad yeah they're just like glued on they don't want you to pull them off so search it in there for the hole there's the hole it's hard to find <laughs> that's what she said there's the hole it's hard to find wow this is difficult because <laughs> this is like because you gotta kind of yeah, I was trying to kind of pull it out after I got out of the package. You could just go there, <laughs> Michael. <laughs> just put it on the end of the stand. Yeah. <laughs> so there he is in the ghost outfit. And it also looks really good. Like, yeah. once again, the cloth, the way they made the cloth looks scaled down. It doesn't look too big, and the wrinkles look pretty natural to that scale. Yeah, the way it drip, like, uh, drapes over the head mm -hmm. looks good. And it's like they did some glue, they glued some parts and I don't know if they used starch or what they did, but it's, it stays in its folds pretty well, even as you move it around. Up here it's real hard, the cloth is really like glued down or something. But that's good, because it makes it look good. And then when you get up close, you can actually see his eyes through there. And the glasses are real tiny, but really detailed. And there's actually little lenses on them. They look like real dad glasses. Mm-hmm. And he also comes with this tombstone. Just one little minor thing that bugs me about it is it's hard to stand up. It wants to fall over real easily. I mean, you can stand it up, but it like, yeah, like that. Like, it just very easily falls over. But yeah, it's real nice. It actually looks like it's in, or feels like it's engraved. It's like the words are all indented. Yeah, it seems like they made this heavier than it needs to be, but... That's okay. Um, it's a gravestone. They're heavy. Mm. Duh. And here's another one of the coolest things he comes with. At first glance, you'd be like, oh, it's just a jack-o'-lantern. But once you see it light up, it is really cool. Uh, I've heard from a certain someone, Shane Pittman, that it's very easy to lose this little screw. So you gotta yeah. be careful. You told me about that right before I went to remove the little screw. And I did notice it's like open down the front of the jack-o'-lantern in there. Yeah. So you could drop it inside of the jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> that would be annoying. It'd be jiggling around in there. Be like, Get I was really it. paranoid when I was doing it. And the, the batteries are a little bit hard to get in there. Not too bad. But it's just, they're so freaking tiny and my fingers are too big. But uh, once you get the batteries in, there's a the little switch. And it doesn't just light up, it flickers like a little jack lantern does, which is really cool. If then, you look at the lid, you can tell which way to put it on. So they're light, they turn the lights off, and then you can see that flickering like a real candle in there, which looks really good. That was really nice, and I, I like how they even put the little line in between the nose and the mouth where they fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> and it's another one of those light up toys that I wish I could just leave on at all times. Like a battery that'll last for like, at least for like a couple months yeah, and then that's... replace it instead of, I guarantee if we left that on it'd be out in a couple days. Yeah, <laughs> if even that. Man, Which it doesn't was... seem like it should go out that fast, it's a little tiny light. Yeah. That is so cool. When the light's off it still looks cool. 
like they got yellow in there almost as if it's lit up when it's not lit up and the pumpkin itself is kind of plain but it's decent enough it's got a few little ding marks yeah it's all right mm -hmm. and i like i like how the lid pops on because it's like sometimes you get little toys like that and the lid would just fall off but it pops in there pretty nice yeah, it stays in and now for articulation which with really with michael you don't need a whole lot you can just kind of stand there and put him in a stabbing pose, and that's about all you really need for Michael. But still, you can do more than that, so let's see what he can do. Definitely need the head tilt, though. That's one of the creepiest things about Michael when he does his head tilt. When Reminds like, me of a puppy. Yeah. <laughs> a really fucking creepy puppy. Yeah. yeah go around like that, turn. And then the shoulders, even though he's got this coverall, these coveralls on, his arms still go up pretty good. Like all the way up, really. So that's pretty impressive. You have to just do it slowly and carefully so that the fabric adjusts. Yeah. So you try to just yank it up, you're going to rip it. And I don't think it spins right there. Like I don't think there's a cut at the bicep like some figures have. But I don't really need it. And like I said, at the elbow, you gotta kind of feel where the hinge is going. But it could also spin there. And then at the wrist, there's a hinge. And also, it could spin. The torso, it's going to be probably a little difficult to see what's happening there with the coveralls on. But it moves easy, spins. Doesn't seem to really go back and forward very far. Then at the hips, do split about that far. I think I could go further, but his coveralls. Yeah, his crotch is a little tight there. But I don't think you really need him to go any further than that. It's not like he's going to be roundhouse kicking anybody. And he can kick out about that far, which is probably good enough for him. And then he's got double jointed knees. And his knees have been pretty good. That's pretty impressive. I think he can. I don't know if he can spin anywhere. Oh, up at the thighs, up here he can tilt his, or spin his leg around. Does he have real pockets? Oh, uh, yeah, he does. Stick the knife in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> He's got real pockets. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> Are these real pockets? Oh. No. Oh, this is a garbage. <laughs> this is garbage. It's garbage now. Shane. Oh, it's back You didn't even know he had any real pockets. Shut up. These pockets don't even work in back. Just garbage. I don't even want this anymore. <laughs> okay, whatever. Let's get back to these articulation. Well, who cares now? <laughs> um, like it looks like he spins at the top of the boot, which is up here. And then also, I guess it's a ball joint. It looks like a ball joint down here. So good tilt, spin around. So he's got really art, good articulation. A little bit hindered in spots like his crotch, but for this figure, you don't. I think you got everything you need. You don't need anything else. Yeah, and if they if they made the crotch of the pants different to give them more mobility, they wouldn't look right. Yeah, so I'm glad they did not do that. All right, so I absolutely love this figure, and I'm glad that Shane Pittman threatened me with death if I didn't get this figure. <laughs> Cause that was it is really cool. <laughs> yes, we were just talking. It seems like still eighty. It just it just hurts. Eighty dollars. That's a lot for a figure yes. this small. Yes. I was thinking like sixty. I think would be justified price for this because it is a really nice, really solid figure. But eighty just feels like feels like a stab in the gut. Yeah. So much money. Mm. <laughs> and I mean, it could really be that. If they charge 60 maybe they would lose a lot of money and wouldn't be able to do that. I don't know. Because making a figure look this good, it probably does cost a lot of money to get them to do it all. Get, get them to do it right. But still, it just hurts buying a figure this small for $80. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know how many more I'll get because we just can't get that many. It's just too much. With the Hot Toys and all the other figures we get. Yeah. But I'll definitely know that this is a quality 
brand. So if there's a figure coming up I really want, which I have seen some, I might get him. It's just, it'll only be the ones who are like, oh man, I want that so bad. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a Jason, damn it. Yeah, you're going to want that. <laughs> and like I said earlier, if they make a Freddy, I'm probably going to really want it. Mm. But yeah, the, the mask looks like perfect. Like it looks better than NECA's old one and McFarlane's old one. It looks better than them and it's even smaller. And the suit looks perfect, I would say. And his jack lantern is awesome. I like the flickering effect. And even his stand, which he doesn't need to stand, but the stand looks nice. And I do like the alternate ghost look. I would never display him in this. Definitely not going to buy a second one just to display him in this. But it still looks nice. Well, I was saying you could just put that stand together and stick it on the end of the stand. Yeah, you could, or just stick another <laughs> figure under there. Yeah. Like in Marvel Legends or something, it'd probably fit under there pretty good. Anybody with blue pants. Yeah. <laughs> So, I love this figure. I think he's amazing. $80, you're going to just have to decide if you want to pay that much. I don't know, but I think he's pretty damn cool. Well, Miss Mr. DMT. And I'm Zombie Cat. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. You see them other pictures there? Why don't you click on one of them to see the video? Or you could subscribe and eat. Ooh.